Hello AP Statistics students. In this video we are going to take a look at the expected value and standard deviation of our geometric random variables. Um, coupled with that we're also going to take a look at some um, special and more complicated geometric cumulative density function problems. But first expected value and standard deviation. Some of my classes didn't get to this, so I want to make sure that you see this a couple of times. All right, expected value and standard deviation. We've just got two more formulas that we have to be able to use, okay? And so when you see a geometric and they ask for an expected value or a mean, you just got to come look up this formula. So write it down somewhere. It is simply equal one over the probability of success. Nice, nice and easy. And then if you need the standard deviation, here it is right here. It is one minus the probability of success divided by the probability of success squared. And then you square root the whole thing. Uh, one interesting thing here, you might, I'm hoping you're starting to recognize this whole one minus P business as the probability of failure. Um, so that is simply the probability of the failure divided by the probability of a success squared and then you square root the thing. All right, let's do a couple examples here so you can get solid on this. All right, so back to the spam emails. So remember 91% of all emails are spam. How many emails should I expect to check before I find a real one? and then find and interpret the standard deviation as well. All right, first though, um, they give us the wrong statistic here. They give us the um, statistic for failure, that's 91%. If 91% are spam, the probability of a successful real email is actually 0 0.09. So this is the number I'm going to be using in my formula. So first the average is equal to one over the probability of success. So one divided by 0 0.09. Throw that into the calculator. One divided by 0 0.09 gives us 11.1. .1. So what does that mean? On average, I would expect to check 11.1 .1 emails before I found a real email. So a non-spam email. All right, let's find the standard deviation now. So again, I first recognize, oh, this is a geometric. They're asking me for standard deviation. I find the formula. It is the square root of 1 minus the probability of success, 0 0.09, divided by 0 0.09 squared. Now I just got to type that into my calculator. Be careful with um, parentheses and order of operations, um, especially if you do this addition and subtraction on the inside. You'll have to put that in parentheses. Um, but I think it's easier if we just square root there it is, of, I know the inside or the top of that fraction is the probability of a failure, which is 0.91. So I'll just go ahead and type in 0.91, divided by 0 0.09 squared. Hit enter, and we get 10.59. Uh, 59, let's go 10.6, that really does sort of round up, 10.6. All right, now what does that mean? We gotta be able to write our standard deviation sentence, okay? So, um, the number of emails I check before finding a real email, all right, that's my context there, typically varied by 10, Point six emails away from the average of 11.1 .1 emails. 
So that is simply our standard deviation uh, sentence frame for a geometric, but it sounds like just every other standard deviation sentence, doesn't it? All right, let's do some follow-up probability questions here. What is the probability there is a real email in my first five emails? I'm hoping this one is pretty straightforward. A real email in the first five at some point. That is a straight up um, geometric CDF. Geometric CDF. That our first one comes somewhere in the first five emails. So that is simply going to be typing in uh, the probability of 0 0.09 and then x is equal to 5. So we'll type that into the calculator here. Second distribution, scroll down to geometric CDF this time because I want to know in the whole first five emails, one, two, three, four, or five, that somewhere in there there is a real one. So that is a CDF, cumulative. Probability 0 0.09, x value in the first five, paste, enter, and we get 37.5, or 0.3, uh, let's go 0.376. So there's a 37.6% chance that we'll get a real email in the first five emails. All right, next one. What is the probability that the first five emails are all spam? Now, at first, you might think that's a completely different question. But you need to realize it's almost exactly the same question as the first one. Just the other half. Well, not exactly half, but the other part of the puzzle. If this is the probability that we do get a real email in the first five emails, this one, the second one, will be the probability we don't get a real email in the first five emails. So all we have to do is subtract from one the previous question. So I'm subtracting off the probability that there is a real one in the first five emails, and that will give me the probability that there is not a real one in the first five emails. So that'll be one minus 0.376. And so that gives us 1 minus 0 0.376, 0.624. Now, here's where I'd like to interject one other thing. Doesn't that sound like a binomial to you? We have five trials, all right, because we're doing the first five emails and they're all spam. So that means we have zero successes. That's a binomial. So let me show you that that does actually get you the right answer. If I instead do a binomial, so second distribution, that was the wrong way, there we go and I go down to my binomial. Now this is a PDF because I'm just doing a single scenario. Five trials, zero successes. That's a single probability. Trials, five. Probability of a success, 0 0.09. X value, zero successes. Hit enter. Look at that, 0.624, same thing. So that's a type of question we could do with a binomial or a geometric. Kind of cool. All right, last one. What is the probability that the first real email comes sometime after 
the fifth email. You see what I did there? That's the exact same question again. I think that's the trickiest part about that is realizing that these are pretty much all the same scenario. Okay. What is the probability that the first email comes sometime after the fifth? Well, if it comes after the fifth email, that means the first five had to be spam. Okay, that is 0.624 again. And if it comes sometimes after the fifth email, well, then it is the simply the other half of the coin of this first one. That means it did not come in the first four, or sorry, the first five emails. So these are all the same question here. Um, at least the same thing you type into your calculator, right? This one is just the straight up geometric CDF. This one you have to subtract it from one, and this one you would also subtract it from one. You would do the same thing as this one. So if the first email comes after the fifth, that means the first five were all spam. That means it did not come in the first five emails. All right, let's do one more here then call it a day. Seatbelts. Police estimate that 80% of drivers wear seatbelts. The police set up a safety roadblock, stopping each car to check for seatbelt use. Let X equal the number of cars stopped before catching someone who isn't wearing a seatbelt. All right, I'm hoping that screams to you geometric. We don't have a set number of cars we're looking at. We're just looking at cars, looking at cars until we find somebody who is not wearing a seatbelt. So first, find and interpret the expected value and standard deviation of the number of cars stopped before finding someone who is not wearing a seatbelt. All right, so again, I'm being a little tricky here with the percentages. A success is finding somebody without a seatbelt. So if 80% do wear seatbelts, 20% do not. And so my success is the 20% because my success is finding somebody not wearing a seatbelt. So if I want the expected value, that will be 1 over 0.2. Type that into the calculator and you get five. So what does that mean? On average, we expect the fifth car to have someone not wearing a seat belt. All right, let's do the standard deviation now. The standard deviation of x is equal to the square root, uh, the top number, 1 minus p, the probability of failure, which is 80%, 1 minus 0 0.2, uh, divided by the probability of success, 0.2 squared. So let's type that into our calculator, the square root of 0.8 divided by 0.2 squared, 4.47. So what does that mean? Let's write our sentence. The number of cars we inspect before finding someone oops, who is not wearing a seatbelt. All right, there's my context, right? Typically varies by 4.47 cars away from the mean of five cars. <clears throat> All right. Let's answer some probability questions for this now. What is the probability the police find the first 
not person. Oh, I forgot the word person. The police find the first person not wearing a seatbelt in the first eight cars. All right, I'm hoping you see that as a fairly basic, straight as straightforward as it can be, geometric CDF. All right, what is the probability of finding the first non seatbelt wearing person in the first eight cars? So CDF where the probability is equal to 0.2 and X is equal to eight. Type that into the calculator. Second distribution. P value is 0.2, X value is 8, and we get an 83% chance. All right, what is the probability the police find the first person not wearing a seatbelt after the first eight cars? Do you see a pattern here for the questions I'm asking? You're going to type the same thing into the calculator. After the first eight cars would mean it was not in the first eight cars. So this will simply be one minus the geometric CDF. Probability is equal to 0.2. X is equal to 8. 1 minus 0.83. Point one seven. Now I should note uh, one kind of cool thing. Another way to do this problem, if you have the old Casio here um, or an Enspire, all right. So you might think of this as eight and above, right? Or not eight and above, nine and above. So you can do it that way with the Casio because they give you lower and upper. So let me show you that real quick. That will hopefully help make this problem make a little bit of sense. So if I say lower as nine, because it's after the first eight, and then the upper, well, here's the weird thing. This goes on forever. You could keep checking cars forever. So here they would get to put a big number. Let's just go like 1,000. That is pretty big. The probability of a success is 0.2. Hit enter. And you get 0.167, which rounds up to the 0.17, doesn't it? 0.167. So that's after the first eight cars. I wonder if I should have gone past 1,000 if I would have gotten closer. Most of us can't do that, though. So you are left with um, this idea here of doing 1 minus the geometric. Last one here. What is the probability the first eight cars are all wearing their seat belts? I can help. Do you see the pattern here? If they're all wearing their seat belts, we did not find somebody in the first eight cars who wasn't wearing their seat belts. That's again the same question as all the others. And I think that's going to be sometimes the hard thing. Just the many ways of asking these questions might start to throw you off on what you're supposed to do. 0.17 again, that they're all wearing their seat belts um, in the first eight cars. All right, everybody, that's that. Again, the geometric is very similar to the binomial. Once you identify it, you just do the same procedures, but with different equations. Hope that makes some sense.